Liverpool is using behavioural science to reduce the number of adult pedestrians who are killed or injured on their roads every year. This is the first time the council have used a behavioural science based approach. It's been a real eye opener. It's completely changed the way we think about road safety. Prior to this, we tended to rely on information and awareness raising campaigns, which informed people of the risks and tried to persuade them to care. But it's become apparent that good intentions and knowledge which is simply not enough. Sure, we could get people to understand the risks and we could get them to care about the consequences. But then they'd just get into their car or they'd step off onto the road and behave in ways that were complete opposite to what they knew and believed to be right. So when in 2018 we found that Liverpool had the second highest rate of adult pedestrian casualties in the whole of the UK, we knew it was time to take a different approach. I've been using data analysis alongside SOMO's primary research methods to try to understand what was going on with adult pedestrians in Liverpool. This led to the discovery of two significant problem areas. The first is concentrated on the city centre and is linked to the nighttime economy. Adult pedestrian casualties here are in the city for the purpose of having a night out and the majority of those being hit are within a feet of a pedestrian crossing at the time of their injury. There was also an intriguing second cluster showing up on the outskirts of the city. These turned out to be local high streets intersected by four lanes of fast moving traffic. Despite these crossings being located on a main pedestrian desire line, people in these hotspots were also electing not to use the very thing designed to keep them safe. Analysis of driver behaviour found that few drivers were breaking the law, so focusing on them would have had negligible effect. Instead, we hypothesised, if we can increase the number of pedestrians who use available pedestrian crossings in these typographies, we should be able to see a corresponding reduction in the number of adult pedestrian casualties. But until we understood why this was the case, we wouldn't know how to change it. So we added to Tanya's data analysis by conducting ethnographic research to improve our understanding of the people involved. We also carried out observations at the sites to understand the effect the environmental context was having on the choices people in these locations did or didn't take. The insights we uncovered suggested that there were a number of nudges, small changes to the physical environment on and around the crossing, that had the potential to cue people to walk to and then use the crossing correctly. It was clear at this point that this work was of wider national significance, so we got ambitious and we applied to the Road Safety Trust for funding. We were successful and this has allowed us to develop the nudges and expand the study to include another city, UK city, Hull. Why two cities? Well, to get a sense of the effectiveness and the scalability of these cost-effective interventions, we need to determine not only whether these nudges will work, but also whether they can achieve a similar effect somewhere else in the UK. So trials are planned for 2021 and in 2022 we'll be publishing our findings. But if, like me, you're impatient, you can go to our website where we've been sharing an ongoing narrative of our progress.